Brighton were chasing a fourth consecutive win and a touch of class from Glenn Murray had the leaders brimming with confidence at Prenton Park. Gus Poyet's team had their chances to establish a more comfortable lead by half-time. The best falling to Ashley Barnes after Elliot Bennett's shot was parried but the young striker wasn't helped by the bounce with the goal gaping. Rovers returned, fired up for the second half, and no one more so than the powerful Enoch Shawumi, who gave Brighton's backline big problems. Three minutes from the end, Tranmere finally found their equaliser. It appeared to deflect in off Albion's Gary Dicker, but he won't argue with Scott Wooten claiming the goal to mark his debut on loan from Man United. The feelings in the, inside the dressing room is that we lost the game because it was a game that should be finished over by half-time. And because we didn't, you know, you gave the opposition the chance uh, to come back. Southampton are on a roll and when things are going their way, expect Ricky Lambert to be in the thick of things. English football's top scorer last season has made a slow start this time around, but tormented Tranmere throughout a one-sided first half. He smacked an early header against the crossbar, but when an almost identical opportunity presented itself three minutes before the break, Lambert lowered his sights for his third goal in his last two matches. The home side's resurgence has also coincided with the return from a knee injury of Adam Lalana. They didn't manage to score once during his month on the sidelines, but now the goals are coming. And fittingly, it was Lalana himself adding the second on 56 minutes. Saints were completely on top throughout and could even afford the luxury of a third goal chalked off for offside. Unbeaten in five now, new boss Nigel Adkins has certainly got Southampton galloping up the table. Brentford moved off the bottom, dumping Tranmere there instead. Aaron Cresswell's raised arm gave the Bees a helping hand just seven minutes in. Kevin O'Connor had the Londoners dreaming of their first away league win since March. And they saw the job through after the break as the captain struck again with a free kick which deceived everyone in the Rovers' defence. Tranmere have taken just five points from the last 21 to slip to the foot of a table, while Brentford hope this will be their turning point. Marcus Bean completed a morale-boosting success. Tranmere move off the bottom after a thumping win at Walsall. John Brain's punch returned with interest by John Welsh. A fabulous first-time finish to dent the confidence of a Walsall team who thought they'd turn the corner after four points from the previous six. There was worse to come. Andrew Davis found wanting by Enoch Shawunmi, who calmly slotted in his sixth of the season. Midway through the second half, Walsall put themselves back in contention thanks to the predatory instinct of John Macken, only for their hopes to be quashed 12 minutes from time. Aaron Lescott seemed to foul Dow Jennings more than once, but the Rovers striker reaped the reward of staying on his feet until he reached the box. That meant that Ian Thomas Moore, who's had a frustrating few weeks struggling with injury, would end this match much happier. It was the first time all season Rovers had scored more than two goals, and they still weren't finished. With the final whistle looming, Welsh netted his second of the game, guaranteeing Tranmere would leapfrog their opponents in the battle at the bottom of the table. Now Tranmere will face Berry in the quarter-finals of the Johnston's Paint Trophy after beating Stockport on penalties. Tranmere had originally been knocked out by Accrington Stanley but they withdrew after fielding an ineligible player in the first round. The match remained goalless throughout both the normal time and extra time. The closest either team came to scoring saw Tranmere's keeper Peter Gulaski who's on loan from Liverpool preventing an own goal from Ian Goodison. And so to penalties, and Stockport had already missed once when Sammy Morrow put away Tranmere's fourth out of four. And then Gulaski then saved from Andy Griffin to send Tranmere into the quarter-finals. Make a note of this name, Dale Jennings. The 17-year-old scouser was the driving force behind Tranmere's impressive victory over the Dons, scoring the first himself inside three minutes. Don's boss Carl Robinson is unimpressed with a side who haven't won on the road since opening day. Not even a penalty conceded by Tranmere's John Welsh could improve their fortunes, although Peter Levin restored parity. But not for long because of that young live wire Jennings. He even bamboozled an experienced old pro like Didi Haman into giving away the second spot kick of the match eight minutes later. Ian Thomas Moore safely scuffed it home. 
Jennings only made his league debut six weeks ago, but if he scores many more goals like this, it won't be long before an army of scouts will be descending on Prenton Park. The Dons were on their way to their sixth consecutive league defeat on their travels, so perhaps frustration explains this wild hack from Gary McKenzie, which left Welsh on the floor, and McKenzie departing the scene with half an hour still to play. That wasn't the end of disciplinary matters for referee Colin Webster. Ten minutes later, he'd reduced both sides to ten, when the already booked Zumana Bakayogo made a most unfraternal gesture on his fellow Frenchman Matthias Dumbe. Jennings, of course, made Tranmere's fourth, a delightful through ball which left Thomas Moore one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Game over with 14 minutes left. That was enough time for Sam Baldock to score a consolation for the Dons, but this one will be remembered as Dale Jennings' coming-of-age party.